thank the First Baptist Church Heights for allowing us to use the facility. Today we have Jeff Hale, who's here. He's really our sponsor today. And uh, we appreciate Dan Fuller allowing us to use the building last Tuesday. And uh, Jeff today has been gracious enough to open it up. These are members. This is not an endorsement one way or the other on behalf of the First Baptist Church. Their members are just free to use the facility and they have opened it up for that purpose. It's not a statement of support or opposition in any way on behalf of, of the First Baptist Church. Today what we're going to try and do is provide you an update on the ordinance so that you understand where you are with that and uh, we're going to outline uh, an opportunity to repeal if you're so inclined and if you're not inclined to uh, ask for a repetition. We certainly respect that and understand that. And we're going to outline the procedure that we're going to use in order to uh, create a repeal in the districts where there are overwhelming support for the repeal. We will answer questions and allow for your questions and answers and comments. This is not a city mandated meeting. I'm not a city employee. I am not a scholar on historic preservation, its impact on you or the rest of the world. I am just an individual homeowner and taxpayer who has an interest in this subject. Uh, I'm entitled to my opinion, you're entitled to yours, and uh, you know, we just want a fair and open dialogue in our neighborhood regarding the ordinance. Responsible Historic Preservation has really been promoting three things. The education of the ordinance, which has been rapidly evolving over the last four months. We strongly believe in the self-determination of each neighborhood. There once was an ordinance that said one thing. There is a new ordinance that says something completely different. We advocated strongly for a mandated reballoting or surveying of each district where every homeowner had an opportunity to vote. We were not successful in that automatic reballoting. So the process they gave us was the petition to reconsider if we're successful with the petition, we are only asking to reconsider, and then there will be a reconsideration. And then we are, uh, have promoted a better due process along the way, and I'll, I'll describe that in just a moment. For just a moment, I, I want to take a poll. I want to, would like to see a show of hands of how many of you here are strongly in favor of this ordinance and what it does for your neighborhood. I know there are many people that are a proponents of the ordinance that are here. They, they come to fact check me, and, and that's fine. How many people here are strongly in support of this ordinance? And there's nothing, I know there's more than one, but thanks, Mark, for that. <laughs> appreciate that. I, I, I understand that you are, and I appreciate that. And how many here are strongly opposed to this ordinance and what it does to our neighborhoods? Very good, thank you, thank you. And how many people here are undecided? Which is really, I want to spend the majority of my time speaking to those that are undecided. You understand that there is nothing on earth that I can say to the pro-preservation people that want this historic district. There is nothing I can personally say that will ever make them change their mind. They are strongly in belief of the historic district as the salvation for our neighborhood, and I respect their opinion. I mean, I really do. I don't, we're not trying to get in a fight. It's a belief that they have. It's a protection and that they want. It's a restriction they're willing to give up in order to have a historic district. And I understand that. On the opposite side, those people that are strongly in opposition to this ordinance, there is barely anything the mayor, councilman Lovell, or anyone could say to you that would want you to subjugate your home and your property right to Randy Pace or Sherry Beal. I mean, there's just hardly anything that I think that the other side could say to you that would want you to subjugate your property rights to that procedure. So we're really talking today for a few minutes to the undecided people, and, and that's that's really what we're, we're what I'm attempting to do here. The vast literature is all about the truth. What is truth and who is lying and who is misleading and what is false. So I wanted to tell you these are my truths. These are my personal opinions. I love my neighborhood and the people that live here. 
And the people with yellow signs and strong persuasions love their neighborhood also and are doing what they feel is in their best interest. I believe that the new construction and the renovation that has happened in my community for the last 15 years has been beneficial to my neighborhood. I feel like it's helped my schools, it's helped the businesses, it's helped bring about safety and increased property values, and that, that's my opinion. I believe that new construction and remodeling has been beneficial. I believe the people in those homes that live in the new construction are beneficial to my neighborhood and that those people would not otherwise have moved to our neighborhood. They don't fit in a typical smaller bungalow, or they don't choose to live in that particular type of architecture. And for us to attract those individuals into our neighborhood, it might require some new construction. I like the artistic and eclectic nature of our neighborhood, and I don't want it to conform to one architectural style. I like that there's diversity and there's weird things that happen in our neighborhood. And while that may be detrimental to you, I like that it's different. I like a modern house occasionally strung out throughout the neighborhood. Each of you bought your home, and when you did, if you bought it prior to last week, you had certain rights as a property owner. And un despite anything you've done, you have now lost some of those rights. They have been restricted by a stronger historic preservation ordinance, and you were not given an opportunity to vote on that restriction. It was imposed by the city, and we advocated on your behalf for you to have a vote, and you were not given a vote. The only opportunity you have to get out of this ordinance is this petition process that's outlined the city council gave it to us, but there is only one opportunity for you to get out of this historic ordinance if you're so inclined to do so. Those were my truths. I look at the literature that, that they pass out, and I get one every day, and I am slammed as the devil. Remember, I am the devil of preservation. You knew that. Sorry. Um, but I look at the literature that they passed out that it's a crime for me to have this town hall because I have somehow implied to you that this is an official town hall. So I want to be clear to all of you, uh, because we're going to talk about the truth, this is not an official town hall. This was an invitation from Responsible Historic Preservation, primarily for individuals who were opposed to the ordinance. That, that's what it said all along on the literature that we provided. They write, those of us, Mary, Kathleen, and uh, myself, that we want no protection at all for you from incompatible construction, high density townhomes, condominiums, high rises, Walmart, all those sort of things. And that, that is not true. That's not a true statement. I'm here, I'm telling you, I support stronger deed restrictions, I support minimum lot size, lot size and build lines, I support where there is 75% support in a neighborhood, more restrictions on our neighborhood. I am a firm believer. Once people started advocating the historic district, we gave up everything else that the city offers. They offer a lot of opportunities for us to restrict our neighborhood. I do not want the Ashby High Rise built in the middle of the Heights. I do not want Walmart to move to the middle of the 1800 block of Harvard. I'm not advocating any of those things. I, I don't think Walmart was coming into the middle of the Heights. And I don't think the Ashby High Rise is going to be built at the corner of 13th and Columbia. I don't personally think it is. But, so I want you to understand that I believe in further restrictions, just not this ordinance. In the literature they passed out, they're so proud that they forced the Historic Commission into making uh, approval for many popular alterations. They shouldn't have to force the Historic Commission to make those sort of things for our neighborhood. What's good for our neighborhood should be evident for the homeowners there. They say that they don't regulate the use of historic properties or land in the historic district. I venture to tell you, if you have a vacant lot in the historic district today, they're regulating the use. Quite, quite frankly, they are. I don't consider that to be a true statement. In reality, last October 13th, just a few days ago, the new ordinance went into place, and it, it is significantly better than the first drafts that came out. Uh, they did make some corrections, but the, 
you must understand the intent of the historic ordinance is to preserve the historic structures in a neighborhood. That, that is their intention. From a city mandate, that's what they want to do. They don't want you to demolish your home. They don't want you to significantly alter your home uh, because it is their intent to preserve those houses. And they feel like it's the right of the city to preserve those houses through an ordinance. And I believe it's the right of the individual homeowners to make that decision. And so that is always the reigning intent when we start talking about an example of will they let me do this or will they let me do that. Clearly, they want to preserve the structures, and, and I'm all for preserving the structures also. I mean, but I don't feel like the ordinance is the only way to do so. It does restrict demolitions, and it does remove the 90-day waiver period that we had in the previous ordinance. Typically before, if you had made an application for a change, you went, you had an education period, an opportunity to discuss the information with the historical preservation officer, and then you went before the Houston Architectural Historical Commission, were approved or not, and the majority of them were approved, and then if they were not, you waited 90 days and you could do what you wanted. So you still had an education period, and then you had the property right freedom to do as you please. You no longer have the opportunity, if you were denied your certificate of appropriateness, there is an appeal to the planning commission and to the city council, but when you're denied, that's what no means no about. That's what they're talking about. But I want to be clear, it allows you to live in your home just fine. It does not regulate the little bitty details of your life. Yes, you can paint, you can change your door, you can change your porch light, you can change your ceiling fan, all those sort of things. They're not dictating those sort of things. If you modify the size of your home, or you modify the size of an opening of your home, you are regulated by this ordinance. If you live in a brand new house, and you want to put a double door instead of a single door, you're modifying the size of your non-contributing structures opening, you are regulated by this ordinance. And so that is really what it's doing. Many of you will never alter your home and you will not be adversely affected from your perspective. Your neighborhood may be impacted, but you are not impacted. I don't want you to walk out of here and say, Baldwin scared me to death that I can't live in my house because if you don't modify, the size of your home or the size of the opening, you are probably not adversely affected. I believe that you're impacted because the neighborhood in which you live is limited, but you may not personally be impacted. There, and, and we're going to just, I, I used to dwell on the ordinance, it's here and it's a little more clear, and, and I'm going to give you a little, we're going to give a little presentation. I've made some modifications to it from last week's deal. I don't own any houses. I am not a developer. I own 205 Bayland Avenue in Woodland Heights, 1545 Heights Boulevard. That's all I own. I'm not a developer. I make the mistake sometimes when I'm speaking saying, we, 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 because I'm in real estate and I'm referring to my client's experience. So I apologize if that was not clear on Tuesday, but I'm going to point out some examples today of just a little deal. I understand that. This deal prohibits demolitions. It stops Tuscan McMansions being built beside you. It stops Philip Johnson from building a glass house beside you. It does do all those things. I want to be clear. If you want to stop those things and you feel like this is the only way to stop it, then you are probably a proponent of that ordinance. But it does so much more that I want to point out. So we're going to start here. This is the mayor's house. 428 Westmoreland. She's in a historic district. She lives in 4,386 square feet on a lot that's 9,375 square feet large. It works fine. This ordinance, she probably can remodel everything she wants to in that house. She has plenty of bedrooms, plenty of closet space, a big enough kitchen and great room.